Welcome to using census data with Excel. I'm Adam Heckman. Let's say that you wanted to use census to do some comparisons of population growth or decline over a couple of consecutive years. Here I am at data.census.gov and you can see that it has some powerful searching capabilities that make finding this data easy. So we'll type that into the search bar. And here are the tables that meet my search. I'm gonna do some further analysis of some of the underlying data. So let's take a look at the estimates of the resident population by state. And here I can see all the states. And notice that I can customize this table as well. For example, I could change the geographic level or drill into one specific state. From here, I can also download the data to my machine. Downloading gives you the entire table as is without customization. Excel will give you the output that captures any customizations that you make to the table to display on data.census.gov. So for me, I'm not gonna make any changes, so either one is acceptable. So I'll click on export to CSV, and down at the bottom, open this up in Excel. Now once it opens, you can see that it's pretty bare bones. It is a CSV file. It gives me the geographic name, which is the state. It gives me the date description, which is the date of the uh, census that was taken and the population. Once you download it into Excel, now you can start playing around with it. Now you can start making it look the way you want it to look. For example, Right now, you, take, you see that each state appears multiple times. That's because in each state, we have a row for each census in the year in question. Slicing and dicing data in different ways is a great use case for Excel pivot tables. So let me go ahead and click on Insert, and then we'll click on Pivot Tables in the Table section. And here I have my Create Pivot Table button and dialog box. And Excel is smart enough to predict the range that I want to use, as is the case here. And note that you also have the option of where you want to put your new pivot table. I can put it in a new sheet, or I can put it in a sheet that I already created. In this case, I'll just accept the defaults. Now, over here, you can see where I have sort of a canvas upon which I can build my pivot table or a blank slate. So what I want to do here is I want to notice here that it's taken the names of the column headings and put it here as my fields. And what I want to do is I want to get data for a couple of years, let's say years 28, 2018 and 2019, and have them by state. So since we want our rows to be the geography in this case, I'll take the geography and area name and drag that to rows. And when I do that, you can see on the left, it's starting to build out my pivot table for me. And since I want to see the population estimate as my values, I'll drag population as values. Again, I can see that the pivot table is starting to get built here. Finally, I want my columns to be for the years for which we want to see the population estimates. So I'm going to take the date description and put that in the columns. Now, this gives us every year from 2010 on, I may not want to see every year. I may just want to see a few years. The dates from this census table are in the date description field. So I can take that date description field and bring it into the filter box. And now I can filter out which ones I specifically want to see. So I'll say, select multiple items. And now I'm free to select a few. Let's look at 2017, 2018, and 2019. I'll check those. And now I'll put that back as my column description. And you can see population estimates for 2017, 2018, 2019, and a grand total. There's quite a bit of data visualization that you can do in these pivot tables just as they are. For example, um, I can take this data and 
say insert and then recommended charts and you can see if I maybe I just want to it's recommending that I build a column chart to see all 50 states for all three years. I didn't really have to do much to get that. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to get rid of that column chart and you have the option to take this data and view it exactly the way you want it. So we're going to make some changes to this. For example, you can see that automatically, by default, Pivot Tables is giving me a grand total on the right for all of my rows and a grand total for my columns. I might not want that. So I can right click on the table, click on Pivot Table Options, and here I have multiple tabs. I'll go to Tools and Filters and I'll turn off grand totals for rows and I'll turn off grand total for columns. So now I have the table looking exactly the way I want it. Let's give this a name. We'll call this rename state pivot table. And let's keep this as is, but we're going to go ahead and take the data and copy it to another worksheet to do some other stuff with it. So let me create another worksheet. We'll select all of the data, and I'm using the shortcut Control A to select it. And I'll copy this, and I'll go into my new sheet, and I'll say Paste Special. And when you say Paste Special, you can see that there's different ways that you can paste it, you can paste it with the source formatting or um, the destination formatting. In this case, I just want to paste the values, not the formatting. So I'll say paste values. And now I have just the raw values. I can get rid of this top row here. Next, we're going to format this as a table. It's always a good best practice to do two things in Excel when you're working with data. The first is to format raw data like this as a table. And I'll pick my favorite style here. Um, and I'll say that my table has headers up here. And we'll change this to row from row labels to state. And we'll just give this a little bit of a shorter name. We'll say 2017 population, 2018 population, and 2019 population. That's a little bit easier to look at and a little bit easier to read. The other thing that you should get in the practice of doing is if you bring something in as a CSV, you should save it as an Excel workbook so that you have all of the features of Excel at your disposal. So I'll say File, Save As, and I can keep the name as it is. All I have to do is click on this drop down and choose Excel Workbook. And this will change the extension from CSV to the Excel extension, which is XL, uh, XSLS. In the next video, we're going to go take this and take a look at how we can do some data analysis and some visualization on the same data.